in a nutshell, the core and cal licensing model basically means that you should purchase the correct amount of core licenses for each server running a Windows Server environment, option between physical and virtual, and then you purchase the, the, the correct amount of client access licenses either on a per user or a per device basis. So that's the short summary, too long, didn't read or TL DR of this licensing model. Now, in this video, we are going one step further into the Windows Server licensing model. And uh, what we are going to explain here is how to actually license the amount of cores for your servers. And we're going to make a distinction here between physical servers and virtual servers. Let's dive right in. Initially, when we talk about Windows Server licensing, we talk about the Windows Server in core and client access license licensing model. And what does this mean? Well, core and Cal licensing, as they call it, talk about two different things. First of all, the core aspect, that's mainly about how to license your servers. And the Cal access part is mainly how to license the access to those servers. If you're already aware with our update with our product licensing sessions, and you already know that the client access license is very important in many different products that Microsoft has to offer. So if we look towards the core part of the core and Cal licensing, um, what this, this, does this mean? Basically, you need to license uh, the servers um, that you have with the proper amount of cores. And you have to do this for uh, all kinds of different products, but mainly Windows Server, Data Center and Standard, and System Center, Data Center and Standard. Microsoft also offers this as a combination product called the Core Infrastructure Suite, also available in Data Center and Standard, but this is basically just a combination package of Windows Server and System Center and their standard editions. These products are basically licensed on a per core model. Now, in order for end users and devices to access servers, you need to license the devices and the users that are going to access these devices. So for that, they have the client access license model, and we will link the video about where what a Cal is and how you should look at a client access license. We talk about this in our product licensing series and also our basic licensing series. Now for um, Windows Server, there's quite some different client access licenses available. You have the basic Windows Server client access license that is just to allow access to your devices and users for to your Windows Server environment. And you must always acquire the correct version of the Cal for your environment or have software assurance on these licenses so that you don't run into issues. What that means is, if I license Windows Server 2022, my client access license should also be at that same level of 2022, or the license should have software assurance on it. If my Windows Server version is 2022 and my client access license is 2019, the prior version, and you cannot access that Windows Server according to Microsoft licensing rules. Now, on top of that, there's some optional client access licenses for a remote desktop server um, access. That is if you put RDP available, um, enabled on your devices for session virtualization. So if you offer a virtualized desktop to your users and you have the right management server cal, which is for security purposes only. Specific around client access licensing, you must uh, license any server that you have external users accessing that server with an external connector. And if you allow external users for optional components above, you need the external connector as well for remote desktop services and rights, man rights management services. So again, if we look at core and cal licensing, there's some additional things that we need to introduce here. So core licenses are needed to license the cores of a server, a physical server in this case, uh, or a virtual machine. So especially that last part is interesting because um, Microsoft has made some changes on this in October of 2022, I believe, where it used to only be possible to license your physical Windows Server machines with core licenses, and then you had virtualization rights. But seeing as many organizations worldwide make use of a lot of virtual machines, either hosting them themselves or through a third-party hoster, Microsoft has also made it available 
to license on a virtual machine basis. And we will talk about these differences in the coming slides and the coming videos as well. Again, any access to these servers require the correct level of client access licenses. And a client access license can be seen basically as the right for a client to access a server environment. CALs are available for users uh, or devices. So you either license a device with a device CAL or you license a user with a user CAL. The benefit of licensing with a user CAL, for instance, is if I have a lot of devices like a laptop, another device, a fixed, um, fixed computer device, a mobile phone, a tablet, I can access all the Windows Server environments on all those devices in one go, whereas the device license obviously is just based on a device. So if many of your users use multiple devices to connect into your Windows Server environment, then a user-based license might make sense. Otherwise, if you have a lot of devices that are being shared by users, it might make more sense to buy device licenses. You can mix those, although you don't often see those. And basically, many users are using the user-based licensing model for this.